How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Roblox Studio video. It's been a minute. It's been a little while, but we're back. We're back with another video. And so getting right into it today, we're going to be going over custom physical properties. And this pertains to everything related to physics in your game. I noticed that all my videos on physics were doing really well, so I kind of wanted to keep that flow so people coming to my channel for physics could learn more about physics. So custom physical properties will basically allow you to change how your physics reacts in the game. But it's not just for physics, it's all parts in your game. So like, let's say we had a big ball. I changed the density and it becomes impossible to roll around now. We'll go over stuff like that. So let's get right into it. And I also want to remind you guys to like, subscribe and share the video, especially with anyone else who wants to know more about this subject. Okay, so we have our two parts here. And we're going to make sure we have a few things enabled so we can start working with them. Because it's custom physical properties and it's working with physics, we're going to first want to make sure that our parts are unanchored so we can actually see the results of changing the properties. If it were anchored, we wouldn't be able to see it. It'd be stuck and frozen in time. It would basically just be wherever it is forever. You'd never be able to move it. You'd never be able to see how physics affects it. And then we're also going to want to make sure properties are open, the properties view. So we're going to go to the view tab, we're going to find properties all the way to the left and make sure that's highlighted. And once you have that open or enabled, you will be able to click a part, any part, any object, and you'll see that it has properties and you'll be able to see its brick color, stuff like this. We're going to make sure the part's selected. We're going to scroll all the way down in properties and you're going to see under part. If you don't have that drop down, I advise you click that little drop down and it'll show all the properties of the part. And then you have custom physical properties. So. You're going to want to make sure this box is enabled to access your properties so you enable that and then a drop down shows up you want to click that and now you have access to your density elasticity elasticity weight your friction and your friction weight and i'm going to be explaining everything about those all right so we're going to be going from top to bottom in the list and the first one we're going to see in this list is density. So density is the more massive something is, or specifically speaking, it's the amount of mass per unit of volume, or at least that's how Roblox defines it. Essentially, if we were to increase our density, we would need higher force or a larger amount of force to move the part. And you'll see that in the test when my player tries to move a less dense part and a more dense part, you'll see that it'll take more or it won't even move at all. If you noticed, I actually changed my own torso's density to be extremely high, higher than the cubes, when it was also high. So before I had a light torso, low density torso, and I couldn't push a block around that was higher than my density. And I changed it to be extremely high, and then I was able to push the cube around a lot easier. And this is because I became the bigger, heavier force. The next one we have in the list is elasticity. And as Roblox explains it, this is a part's tendency to retain energy when colliding or being collided with another part. Setting the elasticity and the elasticity weight high and then having a part hit it would make it move far more energetically than with a low elasticity. Thinking about it in a more simplified way, think of like a rubber band or memory foam. They can be deformed easily, but try to go right back to the way they were shaped originally very quickly as well. The same thing goes for anything else with a high elasticity. Their energy will be retained in an attempt to remain the same. With the example, we can see that it starts moving super energetically to try and do this, moving around a lot. In contrast, low elasticity would make it slow and no energy will be retained since there's essentially just a force moving it around. All right, then and following elasticity, we have elasticity weight, and this will determine how great the elasticity property acts on the part. A higher elasticity weight like 100 will make it so that the elasticity's effect is far more extreme, 
And then when set low, like zero, the elasticity value will have a smaller or lesser effect. And you could see this in the example I have provided. We change the elasticity weight alongside the elasticity and the reaction changes pretty dramatically. Next we have friction. Friction is something me and you, everyone in the world encounter in everyday life, especially when we're pushing and pulling things. Friction is a force that opposes motions between two surfaces that are touching. And when we set the friction higher on the part, it will take more force to move that object across the surface of another object, that being like this block and the floor, unless that surface also has low friction. This goes the same for when it slows down. It will slow down faster because there is more friction and drag from the surface it's sliding on. Think of smooth surfaces as well. The smoother a surface, the easier things slide. And then finally, following friction, we have friction weight. The value of friction weight and changing it determines how great the effect of the friction property acts on the parts. A higher friction weight will make it so that the friction's effect on the parts will be far more extreme. And then just like elasticity weight, setting it low will make it less effective. For example, if I wanted to make it ice or I wanted to make something similar to ice, I would have a friction of zero. So we'd be sliding everywhere. But if my friction weight is zero, the sliding will likely not happen or it'll just be hardly noticeable. Setting it high instead will make it more slippery and more similar to ice. A fun fact that you guys might want to know though is manipulating the properties of the parts and then taking those parts and putting them in water, as in the water terrain, will give the parts completely new and different reactions because it's going to react different with the physics of water. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed or you took away something or you learned something, any of that, please make sure to subscribe, like, and share the video. Share the video with all your friends, your family, your neighbors, your dog and your cat, stuff like that. And uh, I especially need that now because I haven't been uploading as much and sharing the video will greatly help me regrow the channel basically. But we have been growing at a like surprising rate. I already have to make a 500 subscriber special going very fast but I, I do want to focus on the youtube more and so with that expect more in the future and uh, i guess i'll see you guys in the next video see ya